Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. It's a joy and a privilege for me to share this time with you. Um, and as I'm sure many people are wondering um, what's going to be happening now in the near future in church um, and in society at large after the Prime Minister's uh, announcement the other day um, I want to um, I want to just give some practical information what's happening with these morning reflections because we're now not able to have morning prayer in church or um, from next week we won't be able to have Wednesday morning communion in church um, we will be expanding the morning prayer and reflections a little bit. Um, so rather than Tuesday and Thursdays, we'll be doing three sessions a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, at the same time, it's here on Facebook at nine o'clock um, and on the website shortly after, after it's finished. Um, but Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, and not Tuesdays and Thursdays as has been the case lately. Um, while we can't meet for services in church, church is still very much alive um, and we've now been able to expand our repertoire a bit about, um, in terms of what we can do online. Um, so please do keep following our activities online and join in with the services um, virtually. Um, I've heard people worrying about religious freedom in the middle of this next lockdown um, and I just thought I'd say a couple of words about that as well. Um, as I'm sure many people are aware, uh, freedom of religion and belief is one of the human rights. Um, it's protected by uh, Article 18 in the Human Rights Declaration, the U UN Declaration of Human Rights um, and there are um, there are two kinds of rights that we have um, in terms of religious freedom there are the absolute rights some human rights are absolute such as the uh, right to freedom from torture that's an absolute right that all human beings have um, and also the inner rights concerning religious belief. Um, you have an absolute right to believe in what you choose to believe in um, and to worship the way that you choose to worship. Uh, freedom from worshipping um, in any way that you don't, uh, that you don't agree with. Um, and we have the freedom to pray to God in the way that we like. When it comes to gathering, that is something that's called a qualified right. There are human rights that are qualified that have to do with how we express our inner freedoms. Um, and gathering for worship is a qualified right that we have unless something is reasonably hindering it. Um, and a pandemic is something that uh, is a hindrance. It has to be because of public health um, and it would infringe on other people's right to health um, if we cling to our rights to gather. Um, so in this case, we have to be thankful for the absolute rights that we have to uh, believe in God, to seek out information, um, to seek out sources of, uh, of spiritual learning that we can, um, and the way that we can still worship and pray, even though we're not allowed to gather for public health reasons. Um, but let us use those absolute rights of inner freedom that we have um, to praise God in whatever ways we can, to pray 
Um, and the Church of England is calling for a month of prayer, a national month of prayer in November now. Um, in a letter from the archbishops sent out yesterday. Um, they're calling us to pray for this nation and for this world as um, we keep battling with this pandemic. Um, and I think it's also fair that we should be giving thanks for and praying for our authorities that have to make difficult decisions in keeping us safe. Um, so please remember um, the government and all those others in authority and the scientific advisors to the government. Um, please remember them in your prayers as they are making decisions. Hopefully, that will hopefully keep us all safe. Um, but enough from me <laughs> right now. Uh, we have a reflection uh, very kindly prepared for us today by Christo Caulfield on our lectionary reading from the book of Revelation. Um, and I'll be reading chapter two, verses one to 11. Um, and after the, after the prayers, I will be singing hymn number 598 in our red hymn book, Before the Throne of God Above. Um, but before we start now, let's light our candles if you have a candle um, to hand at home, please join me as we light our candles that remind us that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is with us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You, are test you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These are the words of the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your reflection and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, so that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. 
This is the word of the Lord. And a reflection uh, prepared for us by Christo Caulfield. Our morning New Testament readings began a new journey yesterday as we re read Revelation for the coming month. And of equal interest is the Old Testament cycle where for the next three weeks we work our way through the book of Daniel. Perhaps it is significant for us today as we enter another period of national lockdown. In our reading, we have just heard the first of seven letters to the churches on the western ed edge of Asia Minor, now Turkey. These are not letters in the accepted sense of the epistles, but more like brief messages, one with a dis ones with a distinct point to them. The first letter is addressed to the church in Ephesus, a city well known to Paul as the base for his for his evangelical outreach over three years. The city had a harbour with river access to the Aegean Sea, placing it strategically on the major trade routes. This had a drawback. The city attracted the temples of pagan worship and all that went with this. The Christian church was under constant pressure and it needed to guard itself carefully. The letter acknowledges the many good things that have happened, set out in verses 2 and 3. The problem is highlighted starkly in the next verse. You have abandoned the love you had at first. And that love was, first, the love that they had for Jesus, and second, the love that they had for each other. Put simply, they had become a rule-bound church of good works. The message in verse 5 was simple. Repent and turn back to the ways of the past. And following this was another of the if and then pairings. If you do not do this, then that will happen. Failure to repent would result in God withdrawing his favour, removing a lampstand, equates to immediate judgment. How interesting, therefore, that in Reverend Mitch's notices after this Sunday's service, he included a call for help in the coming lockdown. Please care for each other in these dark times. Amen. So a big thank you to Christo Caulfield for having prepared that reflection for us. And as we come to a time of prayer now, we bring before God in prayer all those known to us who are in need at this moment, all those who are suffering for various reasons. And as we remember the church in Smyrna that Paul, um, that is mentioned in John's Revelation. We remember the, uh, the people affected by the horrible earthquake in Izmir, modern day Smyrna. We pray for all the, those who have lost their homes, for all those who are still looking for their loved ones in the chaos and the rubble. Father, we pray that you comfort all those who are affected, all those who are suffering. We pray for consolation for those who have lost loved ones. And we give thanks for all the volunteers and the relief organisations that are trying to 
get some sense of overview in that situation. I'm terribly sorry. And Father, we also pray for all those who are affected by the current pandemic, either through illness, the loss of a loved one, or through the consequences of restrictions that are in place. Help us all now as we, as we come to the second round of lockdown. Help us to do our bit and to take the responsibility that is needed from us personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we give thanks for those in authority who are working so hard to find measures that are effective against the pandemic. We pray for our government and for their scientific advisors. And we pray for all those who are contributing with their expertise in the fight against this pandemic. We pray for NHS staff and for key workers that you keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your church in this world. We give thanks for our archbishops, Justin and Stephen, and for our bishops in this diocese, Martin, Ruth and Will. And we pray for your whole church that you give us grace to follow the example of the saints. That you give us grace to follow the example of all those who have gone before us, who have also dealt with struggle and hardship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we gather all these prayers into one as we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I'll be singing now um, the first and the last verse of hymn number 598, Before the Throne of God Above. Before the throne of God above, 
I have a stronger, perfect plea. A great high priest, his name is love. Whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Behold in the the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with my Lord I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Saviour and my God. With Christ my Saviour and my God. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all and with all those we love and pray for, this day and evermore. Amen.